morning, everybody. Okay, let me come. Okay, it's a pleasure to be here. So I'll be talking about mainly about emerging technologies. So we are starting the strategy track. So let me start with this picture. Could anybody identify what is this picture? This is a reasonably uh, famous visualization. If you learn UX, visualization, etc., this is one of the pictures that's used in class. Okay, so it is, it depicts the uh, invasion of Napoleon. Napoleon is one of the French emperors. He, uh, he invaded Russia. So this visualization shows that invasion. Okay, so try to explain this. An army of 700,000 strong, the largest army to be ever to assemble up to this point, led by Napoleon, who many considered be the most brilliant general ever lived. This army invaded Russia, won each battle, didn't lose a single battle, won each one of them. However, came back, only 40,000 came back. 120th of that army. What happened? So this visualization tells the story vividly. So, uh, Okay, it doesn't project. Okay, fine. Uh, so the width of the uh, gray line, rather the brown line, shows the size of the army. So you see the army going. So at one point he leave army behind, part of food to guard the uh, guard the communication lines, right? So you see the so the first fight for first battle happened at that corner. You see the army reducing, 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 right? Then it turns back, it comes back. You see that black line suddenly grow bigger because he took the army he left behind back in. Reducing, 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 40,000 left, right? So you see the temperature of Russia, right? To explain what happened, Lear Tolstoy wrote the, his book, the famous book, uh, The War and Peace. The, the greatest, many consider again the greatest book to be ever written to explain what happens. Right, so what basically what Russians did was they didn't fight, they just refused to fight, they just keep running away, right? So basically, you refuse to fight, you scorch the earth, you just keep going until the winter comes. Russian winter is harsh, minus 40. If you touch your bare skin to that, it will freeze. It will freeze, the, your skin would freeze and come off. It's that bad, right? So the only way the Russians could lose this battle is by going for a decisive war. If you don't fight, I mean, they are used to the condition, they'll win, right? So this not only happened once, this happened thrice, about 100 years in between. This happens when Sweden invaded Russia. This happens when French invaded Russia. And this happens when German, the Hitler invaded Russia, about 100 years different. The same story, you just don't fight, just keep running. Russia is a big country. They has interesting weather, so it'll do the trick. Right, so now you would see in this situation, this understanding on what's going on, the underlying forces, what's going on, the landscape, basically tells you how to win. Of course, it doesn't tell you exactly how to win, but it basically tells you just don't fight. Only way you could win that, lose that battle, use that war, is by going for a decisive war, decisive uh, battle, right? It tells you that, then you could figure out as you go. 
right? So, so, okay. So, okay, now, of course, we, none of us are managing wars, right? But the, the same ideas hold in technology, right? The technology has the added complexity of that the landscape is changing very, very fast. Like technology is coming, go. So it, it, I mean, if you take the landscape of a country, it doesn't move very fast, millions of years, versus the technology moves very fast. But still, so, you, okay, so given it changes fast also, to, to, to play in that area successfully, you need to understand what's going on. It's, it's, there's, it's not about predicting, it's, it's trying to understand what's going on, right? So about six months back, we, we started this CTO office. The CTO office is trying to look at technology, basically take a step back and look at technology and try to understand it. The first one part of half of it is what Asanka talked about yesterday, the reference architecture and reference methodology. This is to look at the architecture, kind of try to figure out what is the ideal position, kind of label where you are, and label how you can get there. So that's, that's one part of the city office. The other part is two things. It's global market outlook and global technology outlook. So the global market outlook is where are we in now in terms of technology, right? The global technology outlook is how we think it will change, right? It, it's border on the predictions, of course, but we are not really trying to predict. We are trying to write down how we see things are now, how we think things would move. Because writing it down force you to think. Also, that's a way to communicate to everybody, the customers, the well-wishers to people who are interested in technology, how we think. So they can also kind of have some sense what we will do of the, about these technologies. Of course, it will help us in our internal strategy also. Okay. So the first step of doing that is that we basically did series of studies. We looked at analyst reports, looked at different technologies, etc. And we tried to break the middle layer into seven segments. That's the first part, right? So these are that seven. Then we basically did an exercise to uh, approximate, uh, approximately guess the size of each segment and growth rates. So the next slide shows those. I, I'm, I'm not going to, because um, like main idea of the talk is to give main ideas not to discuss each technology in detail. So I'm not going to discuss each. But the area of each this box, each box represent a subsegment, right? Some subsegments are put together to segments. The each box represents the size in terms of revenue they they got last year that segment subsegment got last year the the color shows color represent to the growth how fast it is growing right and some of them has these small arrows that means whether the growth is accelerating or deaccelerating second derivative right like just few observations. If you look at the storage, you see the storage is huge. Again, if you think about it, any system we build has a database in it, right? So, fine, right? Uh, so, you see uh, technologies like ESB are basically the lot of focus has gone to microservices, right? So, ESB as the older technology is stagnant, right? So you, you, you see trends like this, okay? So this picture shows the same segments, trying to show the, some interactions between segments. It, it just shows in layers, right? So you have the storage and the infrastructure. 
on top of that you build apps those apps you build you integrate to make them work together right so you you see the observability ai and security cross cutting and the iot is a layer on top of this okay so so this is the car how it is right now right then the, then the interesting part comes then there are a lot of emerging technologies right so those would decide how it will progress what will happen next right so so there are a lot of technologies which has different amounts of impact okay so so let's try to so so okay if you are trying to understand the technology landscape and try to act on it i think the most important thing that has impact on it is the emerging technologies okay so so rest of the talk basically trying to understand emerging technology so this slides shows history of emerging technologies i i can't guarantee i captured everything but most of them are there right so you see technologies like coba earlier right you see web services oh just one more thing the ones in green are ones that have major impact and stayed there right the uh, the as the top color shows ones that died away some were i mean they are around but uh, not as impactful as before right so the point i am want to make by showing this is that some technologies die but some do stay for the long term right because when when talking about emerging technologies there are two there are two uh, responses that you would very often see one some just go crazy over it right they just think it will it'll change the world the way we know it etc right so that's a one response other response is said that it's just fad it useless fad don't bother right so these are the two but this picture says that both of these views are wrong right now if you are if you are going crazy on the technology what you have to remember is that this has happened so many times before some died some stayed if you are saying it's just useless don't bother right then what you have to remember is some of them worked out right not everything died away some actually changed the way we think about it for example things like service oriented architecture we don't talk about every day but you use it daily service oriented architecture json xml even the web services you use it daily and actually even if you build new systems they are they use you use the same ideas right so the fact that the the one thing about a successful technology is that if it is very successful you don't see it anymore it disappear right so so you don't see articles etc going talking about those things but these lot of these technologies successful ones are there okay so okay so the first step looking at emerging technology is that your response shouldn't be extreme right and basically no some works some don't okay so then there are there are several models to learn emerging technologies the first i'll talk about two the first one is gartner hype cycle right so so these both the models actually kind of say the same thing right so what it says is that given uh, one of these technologies we become very positive we build hope right we think i mean we basically react saying it's very powerful we want to look into it and we figure out all possible 
outcomes from that. And on, while we do this, we generally get carried away, right? Also then promise things that you can't really get to. Right, so, so that's the first stage. So, so you start, you build expectations, then it, it builds so much expectation, you come to this stage that you can't live up to these expectations anymore. Right? Then it just goes down because then everybody is just say that it doesn't work. Right? So it goes down. Now, at this point, if the technology is not real, if there's nothing real about it, it'll die at this point. However, if there is real value in it, some people will start to see, okay, let's see. Okay, everybody is saying it doesn't work, but at least it works on these, these use cases. And people would start to apply it there. But now you are tampered with the earlier knowledge that it, it went crazy, it can't do everything, so you come into the middle and you get to deployment. Right, so again, the second model, uh, Karatapa's framework, right? So the, the difference between the earlier one and this one is the second one talks about much bigger trends, such as IT, industrial age, etc. but same story. It's the same story. It's the, the, I mean, pictures are drawn a little differently, but tell the same story, same four stages, okay? So what this says is that basically, again, it reinforces my earlier point, which is that we, we shouldn't go crazy over these technologies, No, we should disregard them, but try to understand what's real, but always remember that it is human nature to overdo it, or, or basically overinflate it. Okay, so now, if you are trying to understand what is real, how would you do that? What, how do you think about that? Now, I don't claim to know the answer, this is how you exactly do it, but this is one way to do it, which is to try to see the forces in the technology and its application of technology that seem to be hold for a long time, right? And basically see, okay, how does these, these emerging technologies can be evaluated in respect to these forces? So there's 10 here. So let, I'll quickly walk through them. First is cost saving. Okay, fine, I mean, there's nothing to explain, right? If it can, if it can save money, that's good, right? And we know it won't die. It will be around if it can save money, we will get deployed, right, sooner or later. The second is automation, right, so, so this again a trend that you would see running through history. Because like if you look at the first industrial revolution, what happens was that we replace the human power, the work done with muscle power with mechanical energy. That created the first industrial revolution, so much that after the Industrial Revolution, even the poor people were, had, were dressed as good as kings before. Because apparently even the kings had like two, two three suits because the cotton was hand-waved. Very expensive, right? So now we see with AI the same thing happening, but now we are trying to replace human decisions with machines. Automation. Now, again, if you look at these technologies that changes over time, you would see that these ideas like communication, integration, etc., has been a common trend. Because what web services do, they make two parts work together. If you look compared to web services versus Koba. Uh, this, actually, web services do less. But the main advantage was that you can look at the XML, and if, if you send me a message, it doesn't work, I can look at the XML, and very easily we can talk and make it work. 
that's, that's all in XML, that's, that's a little bit, I mean, you can't even call it new. But that makes all the difference, right? It gets applied. Then the third one, this loose coupling. So if you again look at the, how the technology moved from monolithic architectures to web services, now to microservices, etc. What we are trying to do is build the, your system using components that are loosely coupled, right? So basically then it's easier to replace, easier to manage, easier for different team to build it separately and make it work together, easier to maintain, okay? So that's another trend, another common theme you see run for a long time. So those are positive trends. Then to switch to negative ones, one of the main forces that limits application of technology is lack of programmers. For example, if you take big data, one, if you try to do a big data project, you will find out it's not that easy to find people who could manage this. Because our education system don't basically by default teach some of the skills that you need to apply big data. So this is a common trend you will see more and more that a lot of the technologies we see would be limited by lack of programmers. The privacy, so I, I, I go a little fast, right? So the privacy, security, the nobody like to be, uh, like to work with a monopoly vendor because they might just change the prices as they like. Uh, so the government can change how they, I mean, you see GDPR, right? I mean, we were almost, people were almost at the point, okay, government doesn't really matter. Okay, it's GDPR. This, whether you like it or not, you don't have a choice. They are a real active player. They can change things. Right, so, so basically to going back, I, what I believe is the right way to look at the technology is trying to understand these kind of forces that stay over time and try to interpret your technologies, new technologies, in terms of these forces and see, are they giving any of these common benefits you had seen all a long time? If they do, most likely they'll survive. Versus, how would these technologies stay in front of these negative forces? Or would they help us battle these negative forces? If so, there's a chance it'll be around. So, okay, so, so, the, so in, in my belief, that's the way we should look at these technologies. This chart just show some of these forces and some of the technologies and trying to see uh, interactions. Again, I'm not going to walk through, just give, I'll give you two quick ideas. Okay, first is that if you, Okay, I mean, it is obvious when you see it. If you can save money, right? So almost all these technologies promise, give you some promise to save money. And again, you see in the new development, you see a lot of things depend on integration to be impactful, right? So a lot of things, the integration can give you a lot of these benefits. Okay? So, okay, fine. Now, okay, we talk about why we need to understand emerging technology. We talk about, about emerging technologies and we talk about maybe how to think about that. Now, if you are a leader or a decision maker, and if you are trying to understand an emergent technology, there are two questions that you want answer for. The first, what is the impact? How, how big is the impact? The second, how likely is this to be successful, right? Because answer for both is true, you want to go into that, right? If the answer to both is no, you don't want to go and then there's a mix. Right, so this chart basically try to put this thing, put the different technologies under these two questions. 
right? So the four areas are, come from these hype cycles. The impact is broken to three levels. Right, this is, this is not the final version, this is a work in progress version. Um, okay, so what we are trying to do is basically try to use this framework to identify emerging technologies that we want to focus on, okay? And go deep into those technologies, okay? So, so this is something that we plan to release publicly. Right, so we, it's called Global Technology Outlook, which talks about, first it talks about imaging technologies, different impacts, and which technologies we think are most crucial at this point of time. Second is a very detailed analysis of some of these subset of these technologies. Now to do that, we need the framework. We need a way to, given a technology, we need a way to measure it. So that is this. So we call it a technology canvas, technology analysis canvas, right? So now, if you want to analyze something, one way to do this is asking list of questions. Have a checklist. Go through the checklist. Ask the questions. Okay, what does it? What does it do? Which is great. But one weakness of that is it is not necessarily complete because you might miss certain questions. So we were looking to way to do this, and we actually found something called business model canvas. It is a way to analyze startups. And we take the same idea. So this is set of questions put into a certain story. Okay, so this is the story. So we believe an emerging technology would be impactful if First, it needs to have something that kicked it off. It has to have something driving it. A. Then, it has to have real impact, right? Unless it can give you real impact, it can't have effects. Then, can it do what it promised to do with reasonable effort? That side. Of course, you want to worry about how it will, it will build up and the timelines, right? So this framework, basically what, what it does is it takes those questions and broke it to more steps, right? So that you can get into each one in detail. So I'll quickly explain this using um, how we apply this to serverless, right? For example, if you take the serverless, what does serverless promise? Okay, it's promised to promise agility, right? And it promised to save money, right? Now, that is the impact. Now, if you look at the feasibility, it has some problems. It has cold start problems, it has tail latency problems, etc. However, none of these problems are uh, deal breakers. That means there are use cases that you can apply serverless for even if even with this limitation, right? And uh, if you look at the technology, it's working, right? Maybe there's room to improve. Uh, can you find developers? Yes, you can very easily train the current developers to that, etc. cetera. So, so basically this let you ask these questions and answer them. And then basically we write up a report explaining each of these points in detail and with evidence, et cetera. So, okay, so the plan is that we would, we would release, we would first release the, we call this technology outlook, technology outlook for serverless. So I'm, because I'm running out of time, I'm not, I'll just skim through the, these two. The technology outlook for blockchain and technology outlook for AI. And then basically follow up with the, Global Technology Outlook, which look at this, this and the other technologies in detail, right, and try to compare and contrast among them. Uh, okay, so that's this. Uh, so this should come up within about a month, hopefully, right? So the most drafts are ready, we are reviewing and trying to get feedback, etc. But it'll come out very soon, and it'll be available through the website and 
um, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, if, if you follow our Twitter feeds, etc., you will hear uh, when it's come out. Uh, so, thanks very much.